Hello, and welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Doug. And I'm Morris. Hey, kids. So, in our last podcast, Mike and Doug actually got into a much longer debate about wizards versus fighters. And rather than completely leave it cut, I figured I'd go ahead and work it in here. So, without further ado, let's get this started. So, okay, so Fighter and Rogue have been locked behind this Conan, Fafford and the Grey Mouse, or Gord the Rogue type of low magic gritty thing. Whereas, whereas they've compared Wizard to, like, they didn't compare him to Merlin, who kind of didn't do shit. They compare him to... No, uh, no, Merlin did a bunch of shit, including blacking out the sun. It's just all weird shit while he was aging in reverse. It's like, <laughs> okay... It's like I can't I can't understand why we wouldn't have more wizards be like Merlin. It's like I want to be the fucking Benjamin Button wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! That totally that totally should have been uh, a, a a wizard archetype. <laughs> like when, when I shit. when I looked that shit up because it's like I remember you know fucking King Arthur shit from when I was a kid. I looked that up and I'm like seriously aged in reverse like. Why wasn't that more of a thing people talked about? Because that's weird. I mean, yeah, it because like, it's weird as shit. Yeah. Old man and lady of the lake. That's all I ever knew. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You sent me that picture. The guy carrying the M. Uh, I want to say it's the M60. Uh, yeah. Uh, above the river, it's lady of the lake has gotten really, really hardcore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but. But yeah, and then yeah, and then wizards are like they can do fucking anything cuz magic, which they can and they should, but you've got this dichotomy where eventually the fighters and the rogues, they should be epic. They should they sh- they should pick up mountains, throw it into the sea, they should cleave a mountain in half. Always it's always with a mountain, isn't it? They <laughs> They should they should Beowulf their ass across the sea fighting monsters while swimming, which is totally something that they're gonna do. They can jump up in the air and yeah, clear. the air hit things are flying now, yeah. Bring it down, and they should be able to, and it shouldn't be like twenty feet because that's easily fucking like overcomable by magic. It's like, all right, well I always just I'm always just at thirty feet. It's like no fucker, like jump as far as you fucking have to. That that seven league step from the mythic adventures. That's totally what they should be able to do. No, that's a little crazy. I think it is a little crazy, but they should be able to hit like fifty or hundred feet or something. Basically, if a wizard, oh, that's that's possibly the thing that really gets me is a wizard can cast fireball and it's like medium range, which is like a hundred feet plus five or ten per four hundred feet plus whatever. Four hundred fuckers! You can't see at four hundred feet. You take a minus one. You take That's a minus one like perception. A fireball, it's an area effect. You're not trying to pinpoint somebody. Oh, God. 400 feet. 400 feet. That's, that's 400 feet plus 40 feet per caster level. He can totally do it. He's a wizard. He's mage of magic. He uh, fucking casts some janky-ass so version of arcane sight. So he, so he sees squishies in the distance is what we'll call the spell. Because it's an area effect, it's, you know, it's not as bad because it's an area effect, because you don't have to pinpoint. Look, now, I'm... if you have to shoot like it, you know, you know, try to hit somebody from 400 or 1,200 feet away, that would, you know, that's a different story. I, I'm going to be honest, I checked out a little bit at It's Always Rocks, and I my mind immediately wandered to It's like, you know what, even in sci-fi, because, like, and I'm thinking of, of Muad'Dib and freaking Break the Rock with, you know, yell at it. And and my name is a killing oh, word now. <laughs> you teach me your weirding way. Where the fuck did we get off? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So no, if a wizard can still can still fly up five thousand feet, which is which is I'm pretty sure whenever you run out of air and you start to die, and and blast uh blast the oh, battlefield that, with fireballs. Twenty eight thousand feet, but yeah. Whatever. Oh yeah. No, it's it's Kills a mile. Them, yeah. Isn't it a mile up? When do you lose? A mile up. That's Denver, man. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. How much yeah, is... 5,000 feet. That's Denver. That's not... Oh. Uh, altitude, no air. Like 20,000 uh, or like 29,000 or something like that. It would help if I didn't put attitude. That's the uh, here we go. The death zone begins at 8,000 meters or 26,000 feet. Oh, damn. Okay. I was close. 
5,280 is so 26 to 46 divided by 5,280. So about five miles up. Okay. Anyway, uh, where was I at? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if a wizard can back off to, oh, let's say, 500 feet and blast the battlefield with fireballs with impunity, basically, like, that's still... Uh, magic needs to have a slightly closer range. you got to be close enough that, that we can see, shiv you. The, the only way a wizard can do that is if he can see that far or whatever. Yeah, well, who really imposes the penalty? I actually just looked it up. I do. Perception. Perception is zero to notice a visible creature, and you take a plus one perception per ten feet. So unless yeah. you can hit a DC 20... That's what I'm saying. You still have to see it. I mean, a wizard can fire that fireball down at something that he maybe thinks is there. Also, <laughs> what's the, what's the uh, advantage-disadvantage to that much high ground above the other guy? Yeah. Basically, the fighter can't leap it. So a fighter's got to be able to leap 200 feet. At the same level, a wizard can cast a fireball, I think. So fifth level. That sounds about a right. Fi a fighter can still shoot his bow with the wizard. At that oh, level. you <laughs> damn well know that no self-respecting fighter that's specced into two-weapon fighting or two-handed fighting is going to carry a damn bow. Are you mean a stupid fighter? That's, that's yeah, <laughs> stupid fighter. <laughs> because no. a stupid fighter carries a, a, a smart fighter actually carries a ranged weapon with him. <clears throat> All right. Well, fighters can you can pick up a bow and be just as effective let, with it let as me, their fighting style. Ah, one second. Let me as go ahead and, and lean into my microphone with my big seductive voice for this to tell for those of you who are playing at home and don't know what we're talking about. It is a common trope with Doug's characters that he forgets to buy ranged weapons and does it's nothing a, to correct this throughout the campaign. It is not specific to me there are many of us there are many of us <laughs> there's twos of us no no seriously though it's a, it's an issue because you you sink 40 feet and 3 billion gold into being the best axe wielder in your life and then some punk ass pencil necked little robe wearing uh, fairy is floating 20 feet up in the air and you're like, well, fuck, I might as well pick up this bow. I just killed someone that was using it previously. That bodes well. And I'll just plink him with 1d8 arrows. Oh yeah, this is going to work fantastic. That's the oh, whole idea. Don't put all, egg, all your eggs in the one basket. But that's the thing. Pathfinder rewards specification into a single area. Greatly. So, see, the thing is, we over... We I have to beef stuff up because you over specify in one weapon all the time. And you still mow through it like it's not even, it's barely standing still. So you don't have to put near as much effort into it than you really think you do. <laughs> so to paraphrase what one of my favorite teachers had once said to a friend of mine is, Doug, I, I love you, but I hate your evil min-maxing ways. You need to change them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all min-max like bastards. <laughs> Uh, uh, some things I do, but most of what I try to... Well, like... Well, you I, play Wizards. You don't have to freaking min-max. You get all your class abilities handed to you every level, <laughs> two of them, for free. <laughs> yeah, but I, I completely stay away from shit that costs me money, which is all the ones everybody uses to completely win the day all the time. Yeah. Because it costs too much goddamn money. Yeah, 15 GP for a spell. Like, holy shit, why even do that? <laughs> No, I'm talking shit like, oh, it costs a thousand gold pieces per gem per hit die of the creature you're trying to do. No so one I uses those GM things. Gone. You don't. You don't need to. You don't need to pull out an animate dead type of shit. You uh, grease uh, any sort I of can, I can, any spell I that can, doesn't have a DC. Like you can just blow that shit through. Anybody at third level or higher should be able to dance through a grease spell. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's not that's grease isn't really that disgusting. All right. Well, I don't I don't use your shit. But here, endure elements, hold portal, invisibility alarm, uh, line in the sand. I'm actually just reading down through abjuration. Uh, all right. Let's skip over to oh I don't know, conjuration, abundant ammunition, air bubble, celestial healing. Uh, yeah, like I need abundant ammunition. That's really gonna help the wizard. It has a shitty attack bonus. All right, well, good point. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Some of these spells are from help So me it's help almost us. as if you had multiclassed a wizard that he was some form of archer as well. Maybe that would be beneficial. But that would break your your 
premise that you need to put everything in one basket. But no, here's here is the thing. Like a wizard can blow a little bit of money and get a nice stack of scrolls that can kind of handle any sort of situation that comes up. That's where shitty DCs. The you 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 don't you don't stack up the ones with shitty DCs. I was just reading off ones where you didn't have to give a shit about DC. Yeah, and you cost you money to buy that shit. What do you think armor and weapons are for the fighter? Holy shit, that last permanently? Yep. Unless you <laughs> ever change last or ever I, get a... Last time I used a scroll, it didn't stick around for me to use it again. Yeah, that's why armor costs 200 grand, a weapon costs... Or no, armor, armor costs 100 costs grand. Armor costs 100 grand, and that's plus 10. Yeah, armor costs 100 grand, a weapon costs 200 grand, and a scroll is 15 GP. A first level scroll. Yeah. Oh, I want to know how much they. Scroll. Yeah, you want to know how much they go up to? It's like, isn't it like two hundred bucks? Like, holy shit balls! I can't get a masterwork weapon for that. Uh, look up a wish scroll, Doug. That's material components that yep. you can't fucking always bring up wish because ninety eight percent of spells don't have a material component that costs that much freaking money or any Actually, freaking. Actually, quite a few of them have spells that cost that much money. I would love to see that list and what percentage it is. Uh, trap the soul. You, no, you can't. 20,000 gold piece gem to be able to trap a 20th level creature, or 20th level creature. And it's automatically useless after that. Uh, spell list with experience, expensive materials. The material component. So even if you fail, it's gone. And those are the ones people bitch and moan about. Oh, that's, a wizard just can come in and blah, 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 blah. And, and those are the ones they bitch about. Now, to be fair, there are some spells that don't require that sort of stuff, like power word kill. But you still have to knock the stupid thing down to 100 fucking hit points before you can kill it. We talk about the races? We didn't talk about the races. Nope, not at all. We probably should clear the races a little bit and then be done with it and then wrap it up after that. Sound good, Doug? Uh, we can have this argument a different day if you want. <laughs> I would, but I, all right. So let me let me just wrap up one quick thing. So I found a list of sorcerer wizard spells out of the player's handbook uh, that had exp- expensive material components. Now, this is 3.5. It's a little out of date, but still I'm going to stick with it. There's 50 out of the player's handbook. Yeah. I counted, there's 50 first level wizard sorcerer spells. So let's say they do, they do decrease. Uh, let's say I'm trying to do this real quick, but yeah, ninth level, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. There's like 25 ninth level spells, sorcerer wizards. Yeah. And there's 50 of first level, 50 plus so Pathfinder dwarfs that big time. It does, it does. But can we assume that the the ratio of ones with exp- expensive material components stays vaguely the same? Probably pretty. Actually, they're probably more expensive material components than Pathfinder because they got rid of XP requirements. Mm-hmm. So they increase the prices of the spells. At least I think they did. All like right. So let's. It cost XP now cost money rather than XP. So it might be slightly more expensive spells than Pathfinder, but eh, probably 5% more, maybe. All right. So rough, rough estimate of how many Sorcerer Wizard spells there are. There's vaguely 400, 420. I got 420 based on uh, back of the envelope type of thing. So we're talking around 10% of all spells have a material component that's expensive. And I would like to point out some of that shit includes stuff like Arcane Lock, 25 GP. Detect Thoughts, a copper piece. Magic Mouth, 10 GP. General Repose, a copper piece for each eye of the corpse. So, I just want to... This is shit that's not com- contained in the spell component package. Right. And, yeah, Pathfinder probably has a few more because it doesn't have XP anymore. But, um, but here's what I'm saying. It doesn't do a lot. You can't bring up freaking Miracle every freaking time because that is, like, the only thing out there that costs that freaking much. Actually, it listed off Wish back when it was XP, so this 
This list does include X. Yeah, XP, limited wish there. XP varies for permanency. So it included XP ones. So this is actually vaguely up to date for Pathfinder. Vaguely. So we're talking 50 out of 400 some. 10-ish percent. You're killing me. If 90% of your stuff doesn't have a material cost, you can't bring up Wish every time, damn it. That's really it. <laughs> well, that's the one everybody bitches about, so damn right I can bring it up. It is a ninth freaking level spell. You can't bring You can break reality. Well, what's that, the that fact, dog? <laughs> What? Bitch. <laughs> Or uh, I can create my own plane. Well, yeah, for about a day, and then I, it goes away. Unless I use a permanency spell, which costs a shit ton of money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It but costs that isn't shit that you make stuff. into a scroll. It's like saying, oh, well, it's like saying to someone who's homeless. It's like, well... or I don't, Actually, I'm trying to think of how the, how the, how the word this one. But like it's shit like saying... Um... It's like saying to someone who's middle class, it's like, oh, well, I, I don't even know. Oh, yeah. oh, let me, ah, back, back, back. All right. It's like saying to someone who's a millionaire, it's like, well, shit, you look like you're doing a lot better than I am. And you say, well, I, I can't go out to the fanciest restaurant in Paris flying on my private jet every day that's kind of expensive eventually even for me it's like no you can't fucking make scrolls of wish i'm saying on the other side and every single investment a fighter makes into his preferred fighting style shouldn't be overridden by a single third level spell by some book nut <laughs> what third level spell is that fly um a fighter can buy things to fly to he doesn't have them handed to him free. Oh, ah, neither does the wizard. He has to learn them. Yeah, literally. He has to put you them in his spell book, and he has to whatever. You get two of them for free per level, and a then you can, can add as a fighter can fly all day with his shoes of flying. A wizard cannot. Let's let's look at something. Boots <laughs> of flying. They're expensive. Yeah, yeah. So they're eight thousand or sixteen thousand gold. Three times per day per, for five for five minutes. Three yeah. times per day for five minutes. A fly spell, just holy shitballs. It's a minute per level. So that is the very level you get it, you can fly as much as a guy who spent 16 grand on it. And then two levels later, whenever you get, say, a fourth level spell that you want to use more than fly, you can trade it out. Whereas the fighter, if he wants something better, he sells those boots at half price and gets some shit that you he barely catches up with the wizard who just got the better spell for free. A fighter needs weapons and armor to contribute. A wizard gets his shit that he can contribute for free. But holy shit, have we actually gotten yeah, but... far off course. <laughs> so it's at this That's point... It's at this point that I am going to designate that when I edit this, this is going to be its own thing. So it's, all right, all right. Here, it's the let's, races, races, racism, do, and ancestry. Do you, do you want to finish this thought anymore before we go into that though? Because it's like this. No, is, it's... no. We're all right. Races. We okay. talk about this all the time. It's not going to change any. We do. We do. All right. All right. I'm closing I do it down. See part of your point, but you also overblow yours. You know what I mean? Uh... Uh, races. We're going to races. Hey kids, did you disagree with some or all of what was argued here? Well, you could always let us know. Email Mike at Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X.